Legal Survival, the podcast where you learn tips, tricks, and secrets about what works in buying and selling businesses. Our team of a couple of lawyers and one non-lawyer will give you the tools to build your perfect escape. Here's the team to make it all happen for you in mergers and acquisitions. And we're not billing you in six-minute increments for listening. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Legal Survival. I'm here with Andrew Ward and Callum Gilliker at Continuum Corporate Lawyers. We're going to take about 10 minutes and walk you through the four and a half P's that kill deals and ways to kind of combat them. So we're going to go straight into it right now, guys. So, Andrew, the first P of this is price. So tell us how, how price kills deals. So price, I'd say out of all these P's, is the most fundamental one, which is going to kill a deal. Mainly the main one is a buyer coming in and looking to chip at the price through something maybe they've discovered in their due diligence and not happy with the financials. So we've got to look at ways that we can stop a buyer coming in and doing this from the outset, or if they do try and do it, how we can manage the client through that process. And sometimes is it people, Callum, is it, is it sometimes that people expect a greater price than they're probably going to get because it's their baby? Yeah, I would, I would think so. Obviously, when it comes to sellers selling their baby, as you said, it can be quite emotional. They, they want a lot for it. It's their life work. Um, cool. Yeah. And so some of, some of the ways that we can combat them chipping away at price from the outset, what are some things that we can set out in the, in the documentation or the ways that we're, we're dealing with them, Andrew? So... If there's an issue that we know is going to potentially affect the price, make sure it's identified from an early stage and locked down in the heads of terms that we're dealing with this issue this way. Another tactic is to essentially try and tie in any exclusivity period whereby we've agreed you won't sell to someone else into them actually adhering to the commercial terms of the deal. So if they try and chip at the price, you no longer get the benefit of exclusivity. So in that exclusivity period, what type of time frame would we would we expect or would we hope to have written in there to kind of keep us without being able to run away and the, also the buyer to not be able to run away? So we normally recommend that you don't grant exclusivity for more than three months really as a sort of limit. And typically a month or typically because we want to actually see the color of their cash. Don't yeah, we? it usually mirrors the uh, target completion date. So which we'd hope is usually about six weeks from signing of heads of terms. And how do we call them sometimes when we see somebody that comes in that thinks that they want X millions of pounds and we think it's going to be X minus Y, which is a lot lower. How do mm. we, how do we get them to come to a realistic price? I, I think, to be honest, it's all just about tempering expectations, um, maybe talking to them a little bit about their business and, and having these overall conversations about it as well. Um, it, it's good to be a bit more flexible when you're approaching things like price sometimes as well. So, Yeah, I think we, what clients need to be aware of is if a buyer, because you often see a tactic of buyers come in, they'll put a price to blow the other competitors out of the water for the business and then they look to chip at it in due course. So I think mm. as long as the client's got a realistic idea of what their business is worth in reality, then that can help if a buyer does look for a price chip, manage that, manage the clients through that and see whether it's acceptable yeah. to them. And this is where your professional advisor team, you know, the 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 broker, the agent, the the professional advisor, solicitors like us and the accountants, when we when we can keep realistic prices and also a tactic, it makes it much easier for us to to make it through and, and get through a deal quicker, don't we? Absolutely. Okay, so now we're going to move on to the second P. The next P. The next P. What, what would that be? The next Callum? P is, is property. We want to discuss property, which I think is one that we're going to have a, a separate podcast specifically on property and the things that may be involved in that. Um, but property as it's involved in deals, that's sort of a basic summary. It can look scary if there's a property that's either it's, it's going to be moving out of the company and extracted or is it staying within? Either way, you may look at it and think, oh, there's all these sorts of issues that have come into this. There's... Uh, is the lease too long? Are the potential dilapidations? Is it, does the lease not auto renew? Um, what about break clauses? It's do really, they even do they even need the property? Do they even need the property? Indeed, um, they might just be buying it for the clients or the black book or or the or even some of the employees. Exactly. Yeah, I think when it comes to the property, as I said, we'll, we'll discuss it uh, at another point in a different podcast. But just be certain from the offset what's going to happen to it. Um, also, make sure that you, you're generally aware of these issues before you even get into discussing the transaction. So you just know that you have the records about them in the first place. 
because some people assume that the property needs to say what the business is, yeah. and the, the the purchaser might not want it at all. Yeah, and they mm. they also might think that that's the value, and so it's really the property can really become a sticking mm. point. We've seen that in the last four deals, three times we've had to work on extracting property, which is why we're going to have a separate podcast on that. Yes, mm-hmm. exactly. Yeah, cool. So we've gone through price, we've gone through property. Now let's go to the the nasty, boring p word. <laughs> Pensions. Yes. Andrew, talk to us a little bit about pensions and how they, that we've seen them in the past break deals, um, but some of the, the problems that come along with pensions. Yeah. So nowadays, most people have, and the kind of business we deal with, SMEs, usually have a fairly basic pension scheme, usually done at auto enrollment. It's where companies got their own pension scheme in place and where there's historic liabilities there that they've been making the right amount of contributions. That's you know that can tell you to scrap a deal, and it's important that if there is a pension scheme in place to look look at it closely at, 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 at the outset of the transaction, so that you can hopefully manage any issues in advance. So it's a, it's a D word, but deficit is definitely in pension. That that's yeah. definitely can be a, a big deal killer. It, yes, because that's just an additional either drain or additional amount of money that the purchaser has to put into the company to protect mm. that liability. Exactly. Yeah, so I, I mean, I would say as well, pensions, once again, something that from the outset can look scary, um, especially bespoke pensions. But realistically, provided you've had good records, you know exactly what's going on with the pension and maybe you know what you want to happen with that pension, then it doesn't have to be scary at all, really. So we've gone through price, we've gone through property, we've gone through pensions. Now, Andrew, in, because because pensions are so boring, we're going to have to throw you a bone <laughs> here. And let's talk, about, let's talk about people, people, that fourth P, the thing that, that kills deals people would uh, who are we talking about here well this could cover both your employees your key employees within the business making sure they stick around making sure that the right people are going to be in the business post completion to make sure it keeps running as it's been going um but also the people dealing with the transaction itself i mean you can have difficult sets of lawyers on both sides i'd like to not to count myself in that category i think i'm cool. fair but you know that can slow down a deal Lawyers that are not commercially minded, who just focused on sort of minor legal quibbles, and also they direct their clients that way as well, and it can really, you know, slow down deal and cause fatigue. And, and, and this the is the first time most of these people are going to be doing this. So most people do not sell multiple businesses. No, and so that's part of the reasons why we've come up with our infographic to walk people through what the sales process looks like. And obviously, if you're listening to this, you're probably either selling a business, you're you're a broker, you're somebody that deals with selling the business. We've come up with a 55-point system to make sure that people understand where we're at in the overall exposure, aren't we? So we're, where we're at in the process. And also, we kind of tease, tease it out of them, trying to get them to go a little bit faster by showing them how professional we can be by maybe sending over the SPA a little bit early. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So... Also, identifying from an early stage of the process from a legal perspective, preempting what the legal issues are going to be and so trying to deal with them nice and early so we know that they know what our position is going to be on that. And, and also, and we, we talked about this a little bit earlier, but the color of their money, how are they going to fund it? You know, mm-hmm. some of those things, when we talk about the price, it's not only the price, it's how, how are they going to pay for it? Yeah. Because that's, we've seen that break deals too, and that's not even in here, but price is actually the, the funds. How are we going to get those yeah, money? Yeah. yeah, I'd say that falls within it as well as part of Bryce, them not actually having the funds in place. So trying to identify who, what their source of funding is going to be from an early stage of the deal is, is key. And so now we've gotten through these four four Ps, and then there's this half P, and this is the probably the biggest killer out of everything, isn't it? So what's the last half a p that we have here yeah so it's uh, it sounds a bit vague but it's procrastination is is this half p that we're giving you and andrew touched on it a little bit really because it it does come down to people a lot as well but essentially we all know what procrastination is it's it's for example taking something at the beginning of the deal uh, and not discussing it or, or not pushing things um it could be tempting at the inception of the deal to say look this wasn't discussed when it was the heads of term stage. Let's leave that for now. Sit on it for a bit. Think about it. Come back to it later. Well, the thing is, you've really got to address those things early. The worst thing that can happen, and it sometimes does happen, is that when you're getting towards signing on the dotted line, there are still some issues that are still yet to be resolved. So talk about them early. Talk about them on your own side with your own team, but also then have that open and full conversation as well about exactly what terms you want to talk about. For example, if the sellers are staying on with the business afterwards, 
what do those terms look like? For how long? Just make sure that everyone's comfortable. The more you push things off, as easy as it may sound, the, the more problems you may encounter later on. Yeah, I would add that I think it's a slightly two-edged sword as well. So mm. you can often kill deal with momentum at an early stage if you're arguing over a big issue mm. when the parties haven't had a chance to really investigate, do their due diligence, look into a matter. So it's one of those, it's a slight balancing act with it as well. Yeah. I mean, obviously, it's, it's yeah. better to make sure things are dealt with at an early stage so everyone yeah. knows the sort of rules of the game. So this, this, and this is a commercial transaction. Mm. So it's a commercial transaction with tactics and timing and things like that. So if there's big issues, doesn't mean that you have to bring them fully out in the open, but you want to make sure that they're addressed. And you're not going to, you're not going to battle over them, but we're just going to make sure that they're addressed. We know what our tack is on them. We know how we're going to go. And we need to make sure that whether that's a person or a property or whatever else it is, we need to know which parts we want to fight on mm -hmm. and which parts we want to leave alone. Yes. Yeah. I would say, to be honest, that the solution often for procrastination is just communication. Either, yeah, you are sitting on something because you're not discussing it yet. You're, you're waiting until you have talked about it a bit more. Just make sure that you're communicating the bits that you do need to communicate and waiting on the bits that you don't want to yet, I would say. And I think we've really been referring back to that We've done this multiple times and most of the people listening to this have done this multiple times. So telling people this is how things are going to go always helps out because we're the people that are supposed to be guiding these these sellers through the sale of their business mm -hmm. or the buyers. You know, either, either way, we're mm -hmm. trying to guide people through this process. And because we've done it so many times, it makes it easier for us to say, don't worry about it. This happens a lot. It might be the first time happening to you, but we've seen it happen every week. So it's just getting them to understand that this, you know, it's not your first rodeo. So hopefully that's given you some ideas on the four and a half P's. So that's price, property, pensions, people, and procrastination, that deal fatigue. So hopefully you've done that and we can help you do a little bit more of legal survival. Look forward to property extraction. Woohoo! Hey. Looking for <laughs> cash extraction. We got some great stuff coming up. And if you want any other topics, go ahead and email us and we will talk to you soon. Hope you have more tools than an SAS survival specialist when it comes to your company's sale or purchase. If you still need more help, get in touch with the team at Continuum Lawyers. Email us on info at continuumlawyers.com or visit the website at all the W's and continuumlawyers.com. Continuum with two U's. Our clients walk in business owners and walk out wealthier.